сейчас. Сейчас покажу, как поселили наших друзей из Северной Кореи. Холодильник, плазма ебать, спальные места, нихуя себе, не на полу ебать, как мы. Генератор там стоит, газовая плита, чайник. Вот буржуйка, а мы ебать в грязи, в говне, по уши. Зато, зато они, блядь, в тепле. Вот, сейчас. Сейчас покажу, как поселили наших друзей из Северной Кореи. Холодильник, плазма ебать, спальные места, нихуя себе, не на полу ебать, как мы. Генератор там стоит, газовая плита, чайник. Вот буржуйка, а мы ебать в грязи, в говне, по уши. Зато, зато они, блядь, в тепле. Footage of North Korean soldiers training in the Kursk region of Russia has been released. The North Korean military in the Kursk region are undergoing mine explosive training under the supervision of Russian instructors. It is reported that the exercises with the military of Kim Jong-un in the Kursk region were extended for two more days. They say that one of the DPRK soldiers has already died. He has been shot by DPRK soldiers at training. One Russian soldier claimed that the Koreans mistakenly shot the Russians. In his nightly address, President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine seemed to confirm that North Korean forces had entered the fight, and he called on Ukraine's allies to assist in confronting this new threat. The first battles with North Korean soldiers mark a new chapter of global instability, he said. Together with the world, we must do everything to ensure that this Russian step toward expanding the war, this true escalation, becomes a loss. The Russian 20th Motor Rifle Division is conducting a major offensive against Ukrainian positions in Donetsk Oblast, despite suffering significant vehicle losses, according to Forbes. The situation in the Pokrovsk direction of the front in Ukraine is increasingly precarious as Russian forces intensify their offensive operations. As of early October 2024, Russian troops are reported to be within 5 to 7 kilometers of Pokrovsk, a crucial logistical hub for Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces have been engaged in counter-battery fire and are attempting to hold critical positions to prevent further Russian encroachment. Ukrainian 79th Air Assault Brigade, numbering approximately 2,000 personnel, faces pressure from the larger Russian division estimated at 10,000 troops in what appears to be a strategic push to encircle Kurakov, Donetsk Oblast. According to Ukrainian drone operator Kriegsforscher, the situation has become close to critical for the defending forces, Forbes reports. However, Ukrainian forces have destroyed numerous Russian vehicles, including modern BMP-3s and older BMP-2s and MTLBs. Russian losses reached 206 vehicles in a single day, compared to 49 Ukrainian vehicles lost. The Ukrainian military faces additional challenges with its forces, divided between the Donetsk front and a 270-mile salient in Russia's Kursk Oblast. Kriegsforscher questions this strategic allocation of resources, stating, while we lose so much ground in the Donetsk area, I am asking myself, what am I doing in the Kursk area? The Ukrainian Defense Ministry is working to establish new brigades to reinforce the front line. However, these units are still in training, and equipment shortages remain a significant challenge for newly formed units. The situation in the Pokrovsk direction remains tough. At the end of October, 
Russian forces began assault operations, mobilizing large reserves toward the town of Selidov. Russian forces are shelling with various calibers of artillery, actively using electronic warfare systems and attempting to employ armored vehicles. In the Pokrovsk direction, Russian forces are employing large numbers of personnel and frequently using mass infantry assault tactics. Pokrovsk is strategically important and offers logistical advantages. Several Russian officials on November the 6th voiced their first reactions to Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. presidential election, presenting it as a blow to Ukraine. Trump has one quality that is useful to us. As a businessman to the core, he hates spending money on freeloaders, on idiotic allies, charity projects and greedy international organizations, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev said. Trump claimed victory in a presidential vote on November the 5th, defeating his Democratic challenger, Vice President Kamala Harris. The election is expected to have a profound impact on Washington's support for Kyiv, as there are fears Trump might withdraw support. Medvedev, currently serving as deputy chairman of Russia's National Security and Defense Council, nevertheless said that a bipartisan anti-Russian consensus remains strong in the U.S. Congress. The question is how much will they force Trump to give for the war, he wrote. The Republican Party has secured a majority in the Senate in a parallel vote, while the election results in the House are still being counted. Maria Zakharova, the spokesperson of Russia's foreign ministry, said on her Telegram channel that those who live by love for their country and not by hatred for others win. Published a video of Harris quoting a Bible passage, weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning, Zakharova added. Hallelujah, I'll add on my own. Russian President Vladimir Putin does not plan to congratulate Trump on his victory, as the US is an unfriendly country involved in a war against Russia. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said in reference to US support for Ukraine. Putin claimed indifference to the result of the vote and once even said he would prefer Harris as a president in an apparent wry remark while U.S. intelligence has accused Russia of election interference to boost Trump. Trump has repeatedly boasted about his supposedly close relationship with Putin, prompting fears he may seek a deal with Moscow at the cost of painful concessions on Ukraine's part. His plan to end the war within 24 hours and get the U.S. out of Ukraine would benefit Russia by ceding Ukrainian territory and creating autonomous regions in the east, according to reporting in October. Trump's view is he wants to do everything he can to help Putin because for whatever reason, he likes these strong men. He's fascinated by him in particular. Evelyn Farkas, the executive director of the McCain Institute said in an interview with the Kyiv Independent, 